so do, do you know this guy? So this guy is uh, Sir King Ben Lee from MIT. He's actually uh, he's the father of web and semantic web. By the way, uh, analyze the thing that the uh, Sita just said. This guy is uh, Sir Tim Berners Lee from MIT. The reason we know Tim Berners Lee is not because he's from MIT. Yeah. He had only done the work before. So uh, we have this tendency of um, giving undue respect to an organization like MIT, uh, but in reality, the work might, you know, they, they you know, successful uh, people uh, end up there. Doesn't mean that they did the successful work there. Also, MIT does wonderful work. You know, you know it's, it's just that it's just we should not just assume that that is the case. Initial idea of the web that we have a couple of pages. They are hyperlinked to each other. So um, the first uh, initial draft that he proposed was something like that. That these uh, actually not only documents, also resources on the web can be linked to each other. But if you uh, have a precise look at uh, look. You see that uh, actually these links are later. Means that in, in his um, initial draft, he proposed the idea of semantic web that we should not only have link between things, we should have the label actually kind of meaningful link between resources. So, um, Every second on the web, a huge amount of information is produced from e-commerce, from e-government, from game, from different kinds of uh, transactions, yeah. any kind of information. Might be a structured data, unstructured data, or semi-structured data. But the question is that how much of this is the actually data we are exploiting and how much they affecting or search engine, I mean, our uh, uh, search engine is becoming more intelligent with the same speed? The answer is no. I mean, recently Google added knowledge going to for the search, but they still they are uh, bound to the traditional information retrieval systems. So that's a kind of document retrieval. And another problem is that we have huge repositories of data, but we cannot integrate this data together. Why? Because data is not well defined, and data doesn't have a structure. That means uh, that makes the consolidation of data from different repositories very difficult. So that's why actually we come up with a, uh, why we need the semantic web, why we need a structure data and why we need something like this. So you know that we have text data. Text is unstructured data. Only human can read the text. Machine doesn't understand that. It's called machine. It's not machine readable. But on the other hand, we have relational databases. So they have a structure. So how, is the, how does relational database look like, couple of tables, they might link to each other, but a system goes from one database to another database, how much is difficult to link data and integrate data to each other. So that was the reason that actually in the first place uh, XML invented. So you're familiar with XML. Let's have a look. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so, uh, but the problem of the, there is a problem in XML. Let's have a look at this example. Uh, we have a piece of information and we want to encode that with XML. So this piece of information is uh, this sentence, actually. The theory of relativity was discovered by Albert Einstein. So there are different types of uh, encoding this piece of information according to the XML schema. It can be encoded like that, that we have theory, the name of the theory, and who is the discoverer of that. Or we can have actually the person, name of the person who discovered this theory. Or we can have very, actually... Very hard for this. Can you read that? You guys may have to move over if you can hear. I think it was okay. So, so we can actually have a, a person who discovered this. So it's still the problem of actually integrating data even in XML persists that different kinds of schemas or how we can actually infer that this person is that discoverer and this story actually this uh, this story is actually this story so see still is not very well defined it is semi structure so we are not capturing the relation right? yeah. that's the problem so that's why they come up with the, actually, idea of RDF. RDF stands for Resource Description Framework. What does resource mean? You're shaking your head. Actually, my head falls off. Hmm? Falls off of the direction. So resource can be anything. And the context of the way you are familiar with the resources of, of like web page or the file that you are downloading, um, the kind of video you are watching, music that you are listening. But re resources, uh, the concept of the resource is further than that. I'm a resource, you are a resource. This project is a resource. The semantic is talking that we can define and we can describe any kind of resource. Not only on the virtual, uh, actually, society on the World Wide Web, we can describe all society, encode that in RDF as a resource. The concept of the term of resource and uh, actually entity are interchangeably used. You might actually heard of web of, web of entities. So entity and resource are kind of same. So what are the main concept of the uh, actually RDF? The main concept RDF is very simple. So the main concept uh, relies on three pairs, URI, resources, literal, blank note, and this. So we, we will have a close at each of them. First, I should say that WTC sometimes has a standard, actually published a standard for World Wide Web. Sometimes has recommendation, sometimes has not actually this recommendation after lots of revision converted to a standard. 
So for each uh, actually thing that we are teaching here, you can find uh, actually recommendation or a standard of directory in the directory receivers. For instance, for RDF, you just only need to Google that. That's why I told you that you can actually later after class you can uh, I make some hints but you can go to that recommendation or draft and read lots of details there. So RDF is a uh, I'm not bound to this slide. I prefer the traditional approach of using uh, Blackboard. So RDF is a graph data model. That means what is the actually basic of the graph? We have node and we have edge. So uh, the basic actually concept of the uh, argument is triple. Triple contains two nodes and one edge base with them. These two nodes are can uh, actually are resources or retailers. If the actually uh, this edge is coming from uh, the first node, is always resource. But the ending node can be a resource or literal. What the, what literal means? Literal is a data value. It can be a strong a string, it can be a value and not a numeric, it can be a date. But resource is something that it uh, has actually identifier. Identifier is with URI. Then we will talk about that. And the actually age between these two nodes. This uh, actually this edge also has a URI. What I mean by you are every resource is identified by a URI. You are familiar with the concept of the URI. Every page on the World Wide Web that you want to access, you need a URI. Not only pages, also entities, also resources, they need to be assigned a URI. For instance, if you say about the resource of Barack Obama, that should have a URI in the world of semantic web, web of data. That every uh, everyone across the world that wants to say Barack Obama should not use that actually a string. Should that use once use that URI means that a unique person in the world. If I assign a URI to this table, that means exactly this table, which is a unique in the world. So, uh, resources has a, actually URI, edge also has URI. Edge is relationship between these two. This edge also well defined in a vocabulary. For instance, I say that I know Angita. The concept, the relation of knowing is should uh, be defined in a vocabulary and should be assigned a URI. So, whenever I say, for instance, URI of the for instance, we have a vocabulary about the, for descri describing people and relationship between uh, people. It's called fourth vocabulary. So whenever I say that no, it has a URI of suppose this one. So it exactly means that a person who knows someone else. So let's have a look at that, some examples. That makes that easier for you. Uh, so, you see here, uh, uh, we have the 
the resource of Leipzig. Leipzig is a city in the east of Germany. That city has an area code. There is an edge between this resource and the area code. Area code is supposed to be a number or a street. And also it has latitude and longitude. Who is the mayor of Leipzig? There is somebody as a defined as a resource. This person was born at this date and is a member of this party. Also, Leipzig is located in Saxony. Saxony is located in Germany. So you see the graph of that. But how can I, we say that RDF is based on the triples. Triples means three things, subject, predicate, object. So always this first node is subject, predicate, and then object. So how we can actually convert that to a couple of triples? So what is the first subject, life seeking? Then what is the relation? Has area code? Zero to four. It is my first triple. The second triple. Again, Leipzig has longitude. So see, very simply, triples can be generated from that graph. Okay. So we learned that always subject and predicate should be assigned a URI. Subject can be a resource always or a blank one. That we will see what is the blank one. And predicate also is a kind of property which is assigned a URI. And then actually object. Object can be a resource, blank one, or a return. So the triple that actually I wrote here, they are not RDF triples because what's the problem of that? What's the problem of these triples? I said that subject and predicate should be URI. I didn't assign any URI to these actually triples. So then we should actually assign a you are right for this triple and publish, then we can actually call that they are uh, uh, RDF triples. URI is a unique, uni actually uniform resource identifier. It's something unique, it should be unique actually. And it's not duplicated. Also, we have IRI. That is the same as URI, but you can use uh, internationalized resource. Union, so you can use every kind of character from other languages. Unicode. Basically, um, basically in each domain, they use a kind of format for assigning URIs. For instance. Um, for instance, uh, suppose that uh, for this example, for instance, we can actually say uh, the U or URI can be, suppose this triple is uh, published by um, by Minus, I don't know, 
actually, actually government. So we can have actually um, city dot dot, and then actually we assign URI for resources like that, and we should follow it. Any kind of character can be followed. I use basically hashtag. So for Leipzig, we can assign city dot gov. Then Leipzig for area code, we can say city dot gov. Then. Because it's a pro um, property, I use the prefix book and then has area code. Once you actually replace this URI in this uh, three pairs with this subject and object, uh, predicate, you can Why call did you use the VOC? Hmm? Why did you use the VOC? Um, just have a, you, you need to define a kind of a schema for defining your uh, URI. I mean, suppose you are manager of actually your uh, data public manager, so you need to define a, um, a schema how this um, URI should be assigned. Basically, for the URI of vocabulary that we will have a look, vocabulary is when you define a class, when you define a property, you should distinguish them from the URI of the resources, of the instances. So they actually define a kind of prefix to for making that uh, distinguishing. So, See, once uh, we replace that URI with the subject and predicate, so we have RDF to reference. And you can publish that on the web. Uh, professor, I have a question. Yeah. Like while making this analysis, are we assigning this URI or those are already there? No. We you are have assigning? To, yeah. Uh, this is somebody who is publishing data has to assign this URI. If you're publishing your data, you should assign that URI. For instance, uh, yeah, in, in a way, when you put a document online, uh, it automatically has, uh, you know, a URI. Yeah. Right. So, so I mean, it depends on the way the resource is created. If you're putting a web page, then obviously the URI, you know, would come up because that's where you put the doc. There's all this initial part in your file name becomes the last part of the URI. On the other hand, if you are describing in an XML or RDF and providing a specific namespace and putting, you know, describing, let's say, a string uh, or a name of an object or whatever, then obviously that will become an URI or you have to explicitly point out, you have to generate it if necessary. But here that has area code, I can understand that Leipzig that can have a URI in the URL, yeah, you can get it. But has area code, how can that have an URI? How are you going to represent that? That's just a string. Uh, sorry, I um, can't. That has area code. Yeah. How can you represent that as with an URI? Means it's just a string. Every resource, no, every a, object has. It's not. A, don't make that mistake. That's a big mistake. I told you that properties, relationship are a kind of resource. You. What was the problem of integration? We want to you define universal relationship. For you, this kind of universal relationship, you need unique identifier. That means it should be a URI. I mean, it's not a string. But if you use a unique thing like has area code, uh, won't it be a problem that you have to search it with the same exact word saying has area code when you're searching for it? So, see, uh, we define a vocabulary. I am publisher of a vocabulary, and I pu I actually define the concept, the relation of has area code. Okay, any anybody across the board wants to publish data that this data contains area code can use reuse that 
relationship with my URI. Okay, somebody from China, somebody from Germany, somebody in US, they use, they talking from the same vocabulary with the same URI. Use their own vocabulary. They mean if they use their own vocabulary, the same relationship but different URI. With the URI, we keep the same uh, semantic. Okay, we we will see in actually what um, in the area of schema what the what actual relationship how it's defined. Okay. Um, Suppose uh, has area code is already having an URI, someone has already published it. Yeah. So if suppose I am going to publish something, yeah. so if I am using has area code, yeah. so I have to use the same uh, URI? Yes, yes. Okay. you can actually say that if you are a data, you say that I'm, you, you importing that vocabulary and you don't need to define again area code because mm -hmm. it's already defined. You just reuse that and say that from that vocabulary, I use this relationship. That's the beauty of semantic. You see that uh, it says that you can publish data with a triple, with it, which is very simple thing, just subject, predicate, object. But what, it, what, it, why it's more powerful than other kind of data structure? Because it brings a kind of universal. Uh, Actually, accessibility to data with the same sub with this actually URI you can refer to any kind of resource, any kind of relationship, any kind of the class. Uh, Remember, everything that is on the web has to have is a you know is a resource and has to have an address. That address is URI, right? Or URL in user identifier or Located. There's some distinction. You should check it up online. Um, and then when you say when I think you mentioned about how do you search or how do you get to that? Well, indexing will index those words. They don't, and the index will give you the capture the address where those terms that you're searching for appear, whether whether it's a property name or object name or whatever those things are. So. The, using the index, when you search for something, you say, okay, that is what, um, there's a match at the value level. What are the links? What are, what are, what are the addresses for that? And you get the addresses from your indexer. And then uh, when you see the results, let's say on Google, and you click, what you're doing is you are picking, uh, basically you're invoking that URI. And the, it's just giving, giving to the browser. And um, you are, uh, you know, the browser simply takes that link and displays that. I meant that uh, when you are searching for it, when you quote the whole uh, sentence says has a uh, area code to one URI. Uh, when you are searching, when you say something like if you are using voice uh, uh, recognition to search for it, when you use a different kind of sentence, will it be able to exactly. search for the same exactly. URI? So, there is a repository. You might not believe that, but it's possible. <laughs> so, uh, let me see. Uh, so, this repository injected every data that so far has been generated.
So I found all the triples that have a specific property, as you say, for instance, area code. So I say every subject that has the predicate of That property of area code, and this is the area code. They are all triples. Subject, it doesn't show the property. With that property of area code, with the area code. Very simply, you fetch all the triples that has that particular relationship. Do you want me to say that I want all the capital all across the board? So you just replace that. Property with this property in capital. So it shows all the slippers which in vector in the predicate place has the capital relationship. So see I think that's very beautiful. So you can put that triples inside your HTML file. You can make it databases of triples. You can actually embed that in an XML file. But wherever in, on the web you can put a triple. For example, I want to say on my website that I'm friends with Angita. I just write, write a triple that side knows, side is friend of Angita. Very simple tri triple, but meaningful. Bring semantic to your data actually. Is it possible that people have created multiple URI for the same relationship? Or let's say this is just Wikipedia has a record. Yes. Yes. Has... That that actually uh, semantic web is kind of actually uh, kind of allows you the freedom to define your own vocabulary, your own ontology. But it's much more better that you, you reuse the existing ontology of your vocabulary because it makes the interlinking to other data sets uh, easier. Suppose that because uh, your data gains value once you interlink to other data sets and other data sets link to you. When, we, when you actually reuse vocabulary, especially very popular uh, vocabulary, so it makes interlinking much more easier. So, uh, regarding actually the schema, the, if I say that for you and I, you have to use the kind of schema for defining your uh, resources. So I don't know that you have ever noticed the schema of Wikipedia or not. Wikipedia as an encyclopedia uh, has a page for any entity, any concept. So for that concept or entity or page, it follows a specific, actually, schema for URI that it has a prefix of 
Wikipedia dot and then wiki and then the name of that concept. For instance, if uh, it is the page about Barack Obama, it is Barack Obama. So I don't know about you. I don't know you are I of, for instance, Germany. But I think if you follow that scheme, you can easily access that. So the same scheme you have to follow for publishing your own data, your own research. So let's go back to RDF. Okay. We talked about RRI that is internationalized resource identify, same as URI, only you can use internationalized uh, characters. You can use Arabic, Persian, Indian, Chinese, whatever, in your URI. So we say that some of the nodes in this model are literal means they are not a resource. When a node is literal, you don't have to assign any URI to that. This node has a, actually, um, if you don't define any kind of type for that, it's considered as a string. Otherwise, you can define kind of type. For instance, you can use XML uh, schema types like it is float, it is integer, it is string, it is date. So this kind of a stuff. That actually some. Uh, also, you can actually add the tag of language that you publishing that literal. So this is your triple you want to publish on the web. Everybody, uh, what, uh, actually, if you add more semantic to this triple, it's more readable and more meaningful to people. So you might say, for instance, my name is in Persian, okay? I add that at the end, add fr, which is I written in that in Farsi, and another triple I can publish that in English, that it is my written name in English, add English. So let's actually uh, write our triples here as an RDF triples because we got familiar with the concept of uh, actually res URI resources. So we want to write these triples, subject, predicate, object, in RDF. RDF has different serialization. Mm, turtle. N triple, RDF, RDFA, even JSON, I mean, had a serialization for RDF, uh, for RDF. Just have a look. We're using the simplest one, Terta. So Terta says that uh, for subject and predicate, which are always URI, you put that in the uh, angle bracket, and uh, Actually, the literal goes in a quotation. Okay? And after each triple, you have to put the dot. If uh, the subject of the continuous triples are same, you have to put semicolon. So, we write our triple in RDF. That oh. is not. <laughs>
So my first trip was in turtle format. I want to write the second trip as in turtle format. But you and I are very long. I'm lazy. What can I do? So we can define a kind of prefix that I say that prefix. For instance, MC means city.gov. Then I don't have to repeat that. Here I only write MC right click. Here I can again say MC right click, uh, MC work. Sorry. Second reason, interpret format. Yeah, column. Yeah, I'm not sure it has, but I could own it. You have to check. Please check that. Other MC column. Yeah. Whenever you say MC, it has this prefix here. Like XML. No, it's colon. For prefix, it's colon. For or you or I schema, we use hashtag. Okay. We have any questions? We have angular brackets. Angular brackets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The same for the step. Like MC. Leipzig, MC, work, uh, actually it's perfectly rounded. So this subject is repeating. Even for compacting the files of data, we can remove the subject the same when the subject are the same. And here, instead of the uh, subject, we can put the column. That means the next refill has the same subject. Even if the predicate uh, also is the same, you can remove that and it's repeating the previous. For instance, you want to list all the students in right states. So our universe will look like right that manas a student of right state. Or right state has a student manas. I mean right state has a student and become. So subject and predicate is repeating. You won't have a actually huge turtle file, so you compact that, remove subject predicate because they are repeating and then only keep the object value. Maybe I'll use the whole URL you can use the whole of the URL. No problem. So, whenever you actually access the uh, repository, also you can say that what kind of uh, output you want. For instance, I say turtle. So see the output. I don't think people can read from here this small. I don't think read because you see or idea. It downloads the data as the idea. Please uh, read the, for, about the other serialization format because, uh, for instance, RDFA embed three files in the HTML format. I want you to go and see how it's embed those three files. So your web page, in addition that actually 
in addition to HTML tags, data actually written between the HTML tag, which is totally uh, unreadable for machine, it can add three, three paths, which is machine can understand those three paths. So your uh, HTML page is enriched with semantic web data. That part of that, you might not see that those three paths, but machine can see that three paths and can read that. RDFA, RDA is for notation. So, uh, skip some stuff here, but we will come back to some of the concepts later. For instance, here, in the slides, is presenting a relationship. I don't, since it's, for instance, right now you got familiar with the concept of three, but I don't want you mix things together. Okay, we skip that, but we will return that later to that concept. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the first slide, you there was one concept called a blank. Or blank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, blank nodes are again a kind of resource, but we might call that internal resource. Why internal? Because they might not need to be uh, universally accessible. So you don't have to assign any URI to that. So, for instance, I might say, actually, the example is a kind of energy relationship that I skip that. We will come back. You might say this resource referring to this resource, and this resource referring to a couple of other resources. Okay? You can define this as a blank node. So, this node doesn't have any URI. But internally, in your own database, it has an identifier, but it is local, it's not universal, okay? And, but this resource has a URI, so when you can actually define, that's called blank node. But blank node does not have a value, so you are not looking for, you know, for example, you can search for something, if any the other node, non-black node would have property value, let's say, mm -hmm. or it may have literal associated with it, or whatever or it may be linked to something else. This one won't, it's just purpose is to connect those things. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, without the connection, um, the whole model will break down. So you have to have that. Yeah, uh, we will come back to that once we teaching about energy relation, because that's a very example of the energy relation. The example you two showed, uh, the period of that, that there was this, uh, the layers maybe, that is not, no, mayor no, as a resource. So, um, no, mayor is a resource. It has a so URI. there was this name. Uh, so, city is linked to the. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I said as an example, I mean, it doesn't have to, in such an actual topology, it doesn't have to be uh, always blank, no. Okay? In some circumstances, you want to suppose something has different aspects. So you define a kind of virtual concept as, like aspects, okay? It's internal aspects and aspects have some parameters. But you don't want to show that aspect concept to the outside user. It's for yourself. But whenever user fetch about aspects, you show the whole bunch of aspect, actually aspects without actually talking about this uh, internal structure you define as a blank. Okay, we will see that. Let's see, actually, keep that simple for uh, this first session and then we will come back. So, uh, you had about knowledge base or knowledge graph from the question a lot. <laughs> so, what is the knowledge base? <laughs> you learned about three pairs. 
kind of knowledge repository where we can find uh, structured data structure or maybe unstructured maybe unstructured not sure it is to write that you did you finding that but suddenly like it is to write that <laughs> it's more like a search engine for an rdf uh, search engine knowledge base is like a search a, uh, i mean it's like a database of uh, rdf tools exactly so knowledge base is a database which is a structured data and knowledge is very well defined with a format like rdf in that so once we have a actually repository of these structures we call that knowledge base any fact we can define by three terms i say a sky is blue a sky is a statement it is a resource and then as attribute color is blue everything you can define as a three term in the world this per, this is a person is a three term is you are i r p is a person and this is this person has a name angita this person sitting there again this person sitting <coughs> relation of sitting there on the that chair everything can be embedded as a three term subject predicate object very simple logic but powerful logic so you can refer some more on When I say Anita is a student, and a, a student is a person, that means Anita is a person. So knowledge is in the reason. Uh, so did you bring your laptop? <laughs> so I want you to define a knowledge base for your own self in tertiary format, right now. <laughs> as rich as possible. So let's see how many three pairs you can generate per minute. <laughs> what exactly should we do? What? What exactly should we do? You should generate a knowledge base about yourself. In other words, you should generate a couple of three pairs, technical one, about yourself. Write that in third format. So what you should do is that you should have a couple of statements about yourself, and these statements should be converted to three terms. You should define the URI scheme for those for your own three terms, and then publish that in third format. So, ten minutes. <laughs> Uh, but uh, see, I said first publish some statement about yourself. Those statement should be easily converted to three terms. Most of you wrote something. I am a student. I am joy. Okay, you know you are a student. You are joy, but I don't know who you are <laughs> who you are because you want to publish that three terms on the web. So. I who is I, okay? You should publish that statement about something, about a resource. Think about like that, okay? So I write some statements about myself. Ida is a female. So this kind of actually relation most of you have. For instance, I am I'm a student. I'm a teacher. I'm a person. Okay. The so see that triple simply says is this triple is about cider. Okay, the resource of the cider, the entity of cider. The second cider. Lives in Fairbanks. 
Very simple. Subject, predicate, object. Okay? Yes. If I write this sentence like, uh, Joy is my name. So in that case, you can mm. convert into triple. Yes. Joy is the subject and is my yes. predicate. So, Joy is my name. Yeah. Okay? Joy is the name of who? Joy is the name of a resource. Yes. yes. I don't know that resource, but I know its name is Joy. Okay? This resource, once it's assigned a URI, mm -hmm. we can refer to that. Okay. Okay? For this particular joy, we're sitting over there. Mm -hmm. If you assign a URI, unique URI, for instance, write a status, uh, edu, joy, blah, 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 that means exactly you. Okay? And th that joy has the name, that resource has the name of joy. <laughs> So I will add some more statements about myself. So you should follow the same actually. statements about myself, not about myself, about the resource of the side, which has a meaningful relationship. Some of your relationship were not meaningful. I mean, don't use the to be verbs in there as a relation, I mean, a lot. Because, yeah, to be as a, is a, has a meaningful, has a meaning. But otherwise, I mean, you should define what, what that means. I mean, the property should have, the relation should have a meaning. So, uh, and side name, side. We want has to. Names. Is that has name? Has name or name? Okay. So we want to publish that, yes. Is there, uh, do you apply any kind of uh, language processing thing to before Extract it. No, not extract, before applying the uh, URI, do you use any kind of uh, processing to say that, for example, I say that uh, when I, I enter my details, I say uh, Rakshit lives in Dayton. And you say I stay in Dayton. So when I'm searching, somebody searching for something, they say li people who live in Dayton, then only my name will show up, not yours. So is there, is, do you apply any kind of lang language processing? No, and nobody does that. And I, I, that actually, that's one that I'll back up the vocab, published vocabulary that they have. Most of the vocab vocabulary are not packaged vocabulary. If you look at the vocabulary of Divipedia, for instance, it is targeted. Uh, when you look at the property, you get the improvement. No, so let, let me take this question. Uh, see, uh, this actually brings up uh, what I might call syntax of semantics and semantics of semantics. So, uh, just the fact that you have something in RDF, which happens to be a language for describing semantic data doesn't mean that there is semantics in it. And your example is a perfect example of that. To a human, this leaves in or stays or those things are synonymous, for example. And uh, you automatically recognize that two things are same. That doesn't come automatically. This is a framework in which you can do that more easily than you can do it in relational database, more easily you can do it in XML and such. Why? Because, uh, in fact, the fundamental thing that you get about RDF is that for the first time um, in a in a model, data model, uh, relationship is a first class object. So you, you go with any other you know things, uh, you know relational model or other things. The relationships are not first class object. They are value based relationship and such. In that sense, it has added the semantics. 
when you see owl, it will provide more ability to capture other kind of things, some constraints and so on and so forth. That doesn't mean that it by itself automatically has what we call semantics. This is a language for uh, implementing semantic web doesn't mean that it automatically gives semantics. So, uh, this is an example. Um, uh, we do research, for example, on um, uh, drugs, uh, you know, that people use. And there is a, uh, you know, a drug uh, called buprenorphine, uh, opioid. Uh, and uh, on the forum, uh, people discuss buprenorphine. They would use, every one time there is a occurrence of buprenorphine, the 29 times they use other terms. Bup or whatever other slangs that they may use, right? The semantics is that they are same. Right? That is what does it. What how we achieve that is that we would use this kind of framework and something more to implement in a better way than otherwise possible. So in particular, we will build an ontology. In ontology, we will have a term called buprenorphine, and we will say a same as, and we will explicitly put all those same as. Additionally, we will have techniques even to say what are those possible slangs. Uh, that we can directly source from the data and for that we'll uh, employ information extraction techniques like the ones we discussed in the last class. There's a lot more than what of course we discussed in the last class. And, uh, and in that we will have that knowledge and the system when uh, you know would apply that knowledge to look for synonyms as an example. Sometimes we may apply hyponym, hypername, other relations also as you go on. So at some point of time if we have time I will um, talk a lot more about this and about the relations and so on and so forth. So the point here is that the semantics as you uh, you know identify would have to be built in on these through additional measures like building ontologies and describing providing the descriptions of all the information this you know, right that, that is what we need to do. What this gives is uh, to make it easier uh, to specify something. Now same as is a relationship is a first class you know, by being able to model relation directly, things can be done better than it can be done with uh, the non-semantic languages. Let's start with. But there's a lot more to that. It's a very good question. And you should always constantly keep in mind that um, the semantic web doesn't mean uh, that using the standards of semantic web, you automatically get the semantics as a human would call it. Semantics is about meaning and use of the data. Uh, and in, uh, for, for the humans, for applications, that is different than just saying, I have um, a language for semantic web. RDF is a language really useful for building semantic web applications. It makes it easier to actually build true semantics, but doesn't do it automatically. More on that later. Um, actually, I have a question uh, mentioned in biomedical domain. Uh, for instance, drugs or uh, genes, they, actually, they use a kind of coding and drug. 0, 2, 3, and doesn't have any language expression in the URI that you can distinguish what does that drug mean. They, they have some labels that you can see, but uh, actually that drug has the name of this or that. Uh, but uh, the URI might not contain any language. I mean, the, for instance, some of the URI books contain uh, ISP number, so that doesn't have any any board token referring to the name of the board or title of the uh, Does anybody have to go for class? Yes, I think you have to go for the class. So we'll, let's. So, uh, uh, just uh, for your own knowledge base, write more a statement about yourself. Next session, we will learn uh, RDF schema and we will uh, fulfill this knowledge base about ourselves. Okay?